So we've looked at classes now for quite some videos in F Sharp, and I want to start talking about interfaces as well. So if you're familiar with programming in C Sharp, for example, you would know both about objects and therefore classes, but also about interfaces. And interfaces convey the same amount of information or the same kind of information in F Sharp as they do in C Sharp. So they specify what a given class should implement, but not necessarily how to do that. So it gives you, let's say, a blueprint for what this class does, and then the class itself is concerned with the specifics of implementing that functionality. So we're going to create a number of videos or look at a number of different use cases and details of these interfaces in F Sharp. But for now, we're just going to create a very simple interface in this first video. So whenever we create an interface, we're going to use the type keyword. So that's the same keyword that we use for classes. And when we define interfaces, we're always going to start with a capital I for the name. So in this case, we're going to create an interface for shapes. So we're going to name this I shape, and this is going to contain an abstract member. So always when we create interfaces, the members of these need to be abstract. And we're going to call this area. So this method area is going to take unit as input, meaning no input at all. Um, and then we're going to return a float or rather an empty input, I guess you could call it. Okay, so the idea behind this is that for all shapes, we should be able to calculate the area of that shape. And so we can have a common interface across all shapes that tells us, okay, area should be something we implement. And it doesn't require an input parameter because if we have an instance of a particular shape, that should already have, let's say, the um, specifics of that shape that we're trying to calculate the area for. But it should return a float, however, because when we calculate the area, we expect to get a number back. And to show you a couple of examples where we would implement this, the first one would be, for example, a circle class. And you know how to define um, a class by now. We've showed that in previous video. So we would use the type keyword and then we would provide a radius, in this case, float um, like that. And then simply in here, we would have an implementation of this abstract function. So the way we create an implementation here is slightly different from C Sharp, for example. So in C Sharp, you would put something like this and then you would put I shape as an, um, as an interface here something like that. But in F sharp, we do it slightly differently. So the way we write it here um, would be, we write interface, like so, and then I shape, so we provide the, the name of the interface, and then width, like that. And in here, we would define the member, this dot area. So here is the actual member that we're implementing. And that is going to have the implementation math.pi in this case, times radius squared. Okay, and here I have to uh, open system again, just to get the pi loaded. Okay, there we go. We can then do something similar. Uh, so we can create a new type for a rectangle, let's say. like that. And it's also going to take a float as input, but this is going to be the side length, like that. And then in the same sense, we would define this interface, I shape with, and then in here, we would create this member method. So this dot area. And here we would simply have side squared like that. Okay, so you can already start to see the utility of this. The interface allows us to define functionality that's going to be implemented by a number of different classes, but it allows us to do so in an abstract way that doesn't require us to provide the implementation already here. So we can see that something is implements I shape, for example, but we don't have to concern ourselves with the specifics in the interface, but rather in the actual method implementation. So that's the very beginning of our journey down interfaces. In the next videos, we're going to see more details. But for now, I'm going to end it here. So thanks a lot for watching this video and see you in the next one.